Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker and today what we're doing is changing the oil on Stromboli. Um, we're going to be using a 10W40 fully synthetic Suzuki X-Star branded oil and uh, what that means is I just paid too much for it and also a Suzuki OEM oil filter and what that means is I also paid too much for it um, but actually I didn't. Uh, we got a pretty good deal over at Ron Ayers and they had everything in stock and I wanted it that day so you know, not going to complain. Um, Generally, I wouldn't buy stuff with branded dealers because it's expensive. Um, so all you're going to need for this job is oil. An oil filter of the correct size. A 17 millimeter um, spanner, ratchet, whatever works for you. Um, and then also new copper crush washers. And of course, something to put your oil into, and please do dispose of your oil responsibly. Um, feeding it to the local wildlife is not okay. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's get it done, I suppose. So I got home from work not long ago, so my bike's still pretty warm. Uh, and you can also see my old oil level is also correct, but it's pretty dark, and I don't actually know exactly how long this has been in here. It was serviced before I bought the bike. It's less than 3,000 miles, but I still rather be sure. So the bolt is right here. Uh, actually very easy to access if you don't have a skid plate. I will be installing a skid plate to make my life worse. And we're just gonna crack that open. And hopefully not get ourselves too oily here. The key is try not drop the bolt in the oil. Oh shit. What is going on there? What the? What? What is happening? What? What the hell was that? I don't know. <laughs> that is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Did you get that in camera? Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> That's so weird. Um, yeah, try not to do whatever the hell that was. I have to clean the garage floor. <sighs> So once your oil is like relatively drained and or somehow splashed all over there, also you can take off your oil filter. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause and come back to you. So once you figured out, not figured out, once you put down some blue paper on the weird injecto oil from your oil pan and have hands as large as myself, you can open off the definitely not previously lubricated oil filter uh, that was put on, or use a tool like an intelligent person. Um, and then gently take that off, keeping your oil pan underneath it. I generally like to leave the uh, sump bolt still off while I take this off because, as was pointed out by my friend Monkey Butt previously, uh, that can also like kind of let a little bit more oil gurgle out the very bottom as well. Now all you need to do is kind of leave this drain for a while and congratulations, you've emptied the oil from your bike. Now you just need to put it back in. Um, what I do like to do, obviously, is uh, particularly on older bikes, there is no sparkle in this oil at all. But do keep an eye out for sparkle because it might be a sign of, of things to come, um, you know, component failure-wise in your engine. So it's good to spot that early. And I do like to kind of clean up all of the surfaces, just like a wipe off, like these ones are, this is, it's spotless, this bike is basically brand new. Um, but I do like to clean up all those, those bearing surfaces as well, just to, to be sure. Um, you do not need to put an oil filter on that tight. Um, any oil filter I've replaced myself in the past, uh, it's like a little bit of a grunt and it's open, so you don't need to do this. Um, but, you know. So, once that's kind of relatively completely drained and it's never going to be uh, completely drained unless you leave your bike for a long long time uh, which i'm not prepared to do you want to just clean stuff up and start to reassemble so first i'm going to pop on this new filter which like i said it's oem suzuki oil filter uh, and it does look like it comes pre-oiled. Mmm, 
No, not to not to my liking. Um, I know some people will go crazy over me using old oil to to lubricate this O-ring, but I don't really care. Um, I also don't pre-fill filters. I've never pre-filled filters. Again, you can cry about it if you like. Uh, but that O-ring there, you just want to make sure that you give that a bit of a lubrication because it makes it easier to take off next time. Then when you're putting on your oil filter, just spin it backwards for one little turn until it, it falls onto the threads. This should go on really easy, like that. There should be no, no friction there. And then when you get to like almost fully tight like this, I'll just give it like another, when I get fully tight, I'll give it another quarter turn or thereabouts. That's enough. The O-ring is compressed. You do not need to over tighten this ever. That's, that's good enough. Um, like if you're really worried about it, you can give it a little bit more. Just don't absolutely crank down on the thing. They don't need it. They really, really don't need it. Um, please, because make life better for people to come after you. Next, a very important step that a lot of people don't do is replace your crush washer. So you can see here, well you will be able to see here when Toaster focuses on it, thank you Toaster. Toaster's a camera person today. Will you get a focus on it? So this is the old crush washer. The old crush washer you can see is lipped and um, crushed, essentially. There is also a magnet uh, on the sump plug on this, on this uh, V-Strom, which there is nothing on, which is, which is good. If you see a lot of metal on there, um, Again, it could, be, it could be signs of things to come. So once you've found an appropriate crush washer, I'm not delighted with this crush washer, but it'll do. You want to refit this, um, this bolt. So just to show you on the iPhone, this is the sump bottom. Um, does, you're never gonna not have a little bit of oil there putting back on your, your sump bolt. Uh, so don't worry about that. Just clean it off and get the bolt on there as quick as you can. So again with this, when you're putting it back in, what I did is I reversed it, so I went counterclockwise until it fell into the threads, and then I just screwed it up. You, you should not have any resistance here, um, the same as the other way. Uh, resistance is bad. Resistance in this situation means you've more than likely cross-threaded it, and as anyone who's ever cross-threaded anything will tell you, it's a pain in the whole fix. Um, there's really no other way to put it, it's just, it's, it sucks. So generally, take extra time when you're doing, putting back in your bolts. Um, a little bit of extra time saves you a lot of time when you're trying to fix the thing. Then, this is a pro tip. With your oil, whoa, see I nearly did it, I nearly did it. Take it away from your work area and put it as far away from where your feet are gonna be as possible because um, I have kicked oil multiple times and I'll kick it again and it, uh, it sucks every single time. So try not do that. All I do when I'm tightening this stuff is hand tight and a little bit of an extra turn. These do have torque specs. Um, I have obeyed a torque spec once and it stripped the bolt. So I've never done it again. Um, I just go to where my hand feels it's right and I check for leaks afterwards. If there's no leaks, we're good. Um, and I do think the torque spec possibly does differ because you're not using an OEM crush washer every time. That could possibly do it. For the refill, you want to remove your cap here. Um, do make sure that you still have your O-ring on it. Uh, that is important. So this one has an O-ring and it's good. It hasn't been lost or removed in the past. Um, that's just to stop water and dirt getting in there. Again, before you refill it, I like to give it a little wipe off an inspection just to make sure that there's nothing actually in there. Um, and then we're just gonna refill this. So I don't know how much oil this takes. I don't really care. As I refill, I'm just gonna watch my fill window. When we get to our max fill the first time, you have to remember you need to fill your oil filter. So we're gonna start the bike, run it for 30 seconds, there thereabouts, turn it off and top up the oil after a couple of minutes when everything settles back down. I just wanna say this X-Star branded stuff, Motel has a fill spout, and um, this does not, so instantly negative points, and it's more expensive than Motel. Motel all the way. I will be going back. 
When you're pouring this stuff, if you have a cap like this, make holes like that. Uh, Cause you're gonna pour from here and this will suck air back in. It just makes it less messy. You can tear the whole thing off, but I find this makes it less messy. So if you overfill your oil just a little bit before you start it the first time, if you haven't pre-filled your filter like me, don't worry about it because you have to fill this. So we're going to give it a quick start now. So again, um, you only want to run it for about 30 seconds to a minute. So once you've turned your bike off, um, go away, have a cup of tea, give it five, 10 minutes, and then fill until your bike is full. It's about all there is to it, but you'll see in a sec. So we'll show you in a second, um, but we have topped it up. Um, so it's roughly at its fill mark. Now I do have this on uh, stands. So what I like to do is I always like to drop it onto the ground, give it another shake, start it up again, let it settle and then I'll check one last time. Now I did give a quick Google. Um, so the fill with the new filter on this bike is 3,100 mil, mil, milliliters or 3.1 liters um, or some number of quarts. I don't really understand those measurements so I won't use them. Um, which is roughly what we've put in just by judging off the um, oil bottle, which I never really use because I don't trust those, those marks. Um, so we're, we're roughly where we need to be anyway. Um, so that's it. It's really, it's that easy to, to change your oil. And we get to do a fun thing. So first toaster, please show them the, the uh, oil level. I'll just turn on my trusty flashlight here. So like I said, it's not, it doesn't look nicely level. And because I'm on stands, so I'm going to check it when it's actually on the ground before I add anything or remove anything. Well, not that I'm going to remove anything. It's close enough. It's fine. And now for the fun bit. Stromboli has been serviced. Uh, artwork provided by Toaster is behind the camera. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's it. It's really, it's that easy to change the oil on your, your V-Strom. If you do have a skid plate, which I'll be adding soon, that obviously will include, you know, add a little bit of extra time. If I was here on my own, not recording, this would probably take me 10 to 15 minutes, max. Maybe 20 if I'm arsing around trying to find stuff. Um, but it really is that simple. Uh, so I do recommend you do this yourself at home. Uh, if you're a hobbyist mechanic or wanting to learn, changing your oil is, is really the easiest thing to start with. Um, just always remember it's easier to add some oil than take some out. So always take your time um, adding the oil. Don't, don't go crazy straight off the bat. Another thing to do, which I've already done, is check on the floor for any leaks after you start it up and stuff to make sure that you've tightened your bolt correctly and you've tightened your oil filter correctly. Now is the time to check for leaks, not when you're 50 miles from home or whatever else. That's, that's the, the bad time to check for leaks. And yeah, any questions, please do let me know in the comments. Um, I do not have an oil recommendation at all. What I usually would use is Motul. Uh, that's M-O-T-U-L. That's what I would use historically forever. It's never let me down. So generally that's what I put in my bikes. Uh, it's what's in that one, the lovely CB. And uh, it hasn't, hasn't failed it yet. I do tend to use fully synthetic in uh, newer bikes that I've had. Uh, older bikes like this one, like the Jixxer, I've always put semi-synthetic because it doesn't really matter. Um, does it make a huge amount of difference? Probably not, but fully synthetic is, is generally seen by manufacturers as being kinder and better, and it's more expensive, so that makes it more better, right? But yeah, if you've watched, thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to all of my patrons. Um, the next video on the V-Strom in the shed, garage, will be uh, fitting the skid plate, which was paid for entirely by my patrons, so massive thank you to all of you. I really do appreciate that. Uh, as you all know, I've already told you that. Um, but yeah, that was, that was pretty cool to be able to, to order something for the bike entirely off and um, money saved up through Patreon. So massive thank you. And yeah, until next time, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro crew. Do you pre-fill your filter? Are you a psychopath is generally actually what I'm asking. Um, just, just out of interest. Uh, are there filter pre-fillers out there? 
And I'm not saying you are definitely a psychopath, but you know, maybe get checked if uh, if you do that because because you're insane, you know. But you know that that's okay. That's okay too. There's nothing wrong with it. There's actually a lot wrong with it, but you know, it's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Let me know in the comments. Bye, Otroko.